Every IT tool gives you numbers about your IT estate. Tanium is no exception. How many clear text passwords do you have? Which out of support operating systems are still here? These numbers are a blessing and a curse because numbers alone don't tell us what needs to improve. Numbers don't tell us where we're doing better than our peers. Numbers alone don't tell us where to spend the limited human time to make the most difference to our operations and security. And a bunch of numbers alone can't tell the board the difference that you or your team are doing to make things better. Tanium has brought something wonderful to this. Tanium allows us to compare across a wide range of metrics how we are relative to other companies in our industry. The range, as I'm sure your experience with Tanium, is always growing of the kind of things that we're measuring. But the heart of this is, where am I in green or better than the average for my industry? Or where am I in red behind it? And let's drill in and make this a little bit more practical. In this particular one, disk encryption, I'm worse than average. Administrative access, I'm much worse than average. But mean time to patch or update, I'm far better than average. This is so important because it allows us to know that spending time improving the time to patch won't be nearly as valuable to the organization as putting our same precious human IT professionals to work on solving this problem of excessive credentials or insecure TLS or expired certificates. Of course, Retanium will always be adding to these, but let's go a little bit further and just explain the charts you're seeing here. So the mean is the high point on these bell curves. The median is the numbered 50 that you see here. Sometimes it's better than the mean, sometimes worse. And those both cases tell you that there are outliers. There are companies dragging that number much further the other direction. The narrowness of a curve, like you see here with antivirus, tells us that the other companies in our industry are within a very narrow band. They're quite close to us. Whereas a very broad one, like the encryption here or the password identification, means there's a wide range of answers. Some are very close and very far, and then folks like this compliance lie in between those two. So this is the kind of visualization, though, that lets us capture the difference we're making. If I say it was 750,000 patches that I closed last month, but 650,000 new ones came, I can't tell. Were those more severe? Was I worse? Am I getting ahead? Am I trading water? But if I say relative to my industry, we were in the 32nd percentile three months ago. And we're in the 45th or the 50th percentile relative to my industry. That's a number that someone that's not in IT, that's a number of the board, that's always someone in IT can understand the difference that we've made. Where we're not just trading water, we've actually moved things in a significant way forward. So let's go a step further and explore some of the numbers underneath these metrics that you're seeing here. So in this case, we're going to go look, and obviously we can view this for the entire organization, or we can drill down and have it by some particular group. But here I have vulnerability or compliance or administrative access was terrible. Over on the right-hand side, we can see that's currently 20% of the score. And if I click on it, it will bring me in to a histogram, which I could view from the top as well. But then what machines are dragging down my administrative access score? Currently, I'm viewing it from a machine perspective. But I could just as easily view it from a user perspective. Why is this service account have indirect control of that many? All right, let's head back to our endpoints here. Then in the individual one, you'll see that we have this concept of, all right, here's a machine that has exposed credentials. We could view the details. Why is it that others have far greater administrative access than it? But you'll also see this concept of endpoint criticality. So a low score on a critical endpoint might be more significant to our overall than a medium on a merely medium endpoint or high endpoint, et cetera. And as with everything in Tanium, we could click in here to get further information, or we're going to click this button to explore with an impact. And that will take us a level deeper. Why is James Klapow here have indirect control of 15 machines? And why does poor James have 11 active sessions right now? Is he logging that many places as a company abused? 
Or why do 792 folks have inbound control of his? Again, the point of today's isn't to take you through Tanium and X exploration of administrative privileges and credentials. It's just to show you that you can drill in quickly, see why it's worse. And obviously, we could you know, take poor James a level deeper, find out what groups have access to him, where that 792 came from, what groups perhaps have more members than they ought to have, etc. And that would bring us then to fix this, in this case, within Active Directory. There are other things that Tanium showed us here within the benchmark where we might fix them right here within Tanium itself. So I pick on one that was uh, quite terrible for us, which was around the vulnerability information. It's the top of this particular chart. And again, as before, if I click on it, I can see a histogram. I can see what machines contribute the worst. And that same concept of a high endpoint score and a critical endpoint might contribute more to the overall vector than necessarily a medium on a less important, less critical. And that criticality can be set manually, can be set by rules. My domain controllers are critical, my execs are critical, etc. And as before, we could view it by the machine perspective, or in this case, I'm flipping over to view it from a vulnerability perspective. And as before, we could go and, oh, what the heck is CVE 2022, 2187? Well, we're a click away from explore this further and comply, and it would show us more information about that particular vulnerability. We'll view it from exactly that angle here. You'll see that it's already pre-filtered it down just to that single vulnerability. And here it is, what do you know, CVSS 9.8, critical vulnerability. And then if we were to explore why, what's involved, the complete loss of the triad, and sure enough, we'd have a servicing stack update to do something about it. So right here, I have a remediate and patch button, but uh, we could click this one. But what I was going to do is we could do the same thing directly from that benchmark tab if we wanted to. They'll bring us to the same place. It'll look through the 3,100 patches here across the estate, filter by that particular CVE that was making things so much worse or our overall score. And I am a click away from patching it here on my three 2016 and one 2019 that are missing it and my four windows 10 versions are perfectly clean so again the point being in tanium we are where appropriate a click away from we have the problem do something about it and uh, in this case of patching we'll leave this one unclicked and step back so heading off again to <sighs> This workbench where we're showing off the vulnerabilities themselves, where we're showing off the insecure handling, where we're showing the process. One of the other elements to highlight here is compensating controls. So there might be a case where you had a control in place and hence the it would mitigate or decrease the risk associated or decrease the impact compared to your peers. Again, if your peers don't have that, that same visibility is helping you. So we can see cred guards, my Mac controls are well done and my PowerShell execution policy is set nowhere it's simultaneously again, where I could spend time, where I could make things better, where I could show that I made things better. So bringing that back here to our overview, we're currently viewing these all in a risk format. You can change the time interval if you want to view the last month or view the last 30 days, the charts themselves then adjust. And obviously that same flexibility to view on particular groups or particular subgroups where those numbers, again, might be relevant to someone within your organization or someone else. All right, so bringing us back here, the concept of this information with Tanium is that we can take what were numbers, numbers where the context would be difficult or impossible to explain to someone outside of IT and even within IT, which is better, which is worse, how am I really helping? Instead, we have here, at, instantly at a glance, we can tell we're getting better than we were last month. We're getting worse than we were last month. And obviously, from your perspective, you can highlight prioritized human time where it will make the most difference. And then come back afterwards, a month or three months later, and show the difference you've made. Not just in a void, not just trading water against an ever-increasing world of threats, but relative to others in your industry, others facing the same challenges, meeting the same business problems, 
how you have moved your security up. And then something I always love is once these are all green, you can raise the bar. You can set yourself instead of the median to the 75th percentile within that. So now that we've shown how you can use Tanium to better understand where to improve your security and then to prove back to the differences you've made. The next question is, what are the things you would love to be measured on? What are the elements that you'd like to see and compare yourself against your peers? Tanium is always adding to these metrics. So which are the ones that would make a difference for you?